I know I haven't been active as much recently, but these past few days have been absolutely crazy. We have the new DeepSeek OCR model that you might have heard about, but most people miss the point. The paper isn't about OCR. We have more accurate OCR models. This paper changes the whole dynamic and it might actually be the last nail in the coffin for language models. Then out of nowhere, a couple of AI leaders revealed that they have a solution for continual learning. This has been known as the biggest roadblock to AGI. Apparently, the reason labs haven't used it yet isn't technical difficulty, but the serious security risks it poses. And now it looks like Elon might go ahead and try it anyway. So let's get into it. DeepSeek introduced this paper alongside a new open source model. And basically what they proposed is this. What if instead of breaking sentences into words and even subwords and call them tokens to feed them to the language model, we took the image of a document and then broke the image into a smaller patches and fed that into the model. So in the paper, they show that the most obvious benefit of this is a single image containing document text can represent rich information using substantially fewer tokens, suggesting that optical compression through vision tokens, and by vision tokens we mean the patches, could achieve much higher compression ratios. That means for the same amount of compute, we can have 10 to 20 times larger context windows because the information is better compressed. And that is already huge. 10x context window for free also means you get to train the model on a larger body of text. And the larger the chunk you are training on, the more long-term patterns the model can discover. So if you imagine a model trained on sentences that are only as long as 10 words, there is no word in which this model can understand an overarching narrative in a novel, because those patterns simply don't exist in a sentence. But if a model is trained on chunks of content as big as the entire data posted on X in a month, it will be able to see patterns of human activity that are not even comprehensible by us. So the context window is both a nice plus on the user side in inference time and also an unlock for training a much more intelligent model. By the way, just for clarity, although the current models are trained on trillions of tokens, these tokens are mostly fed in in 16 or 32k chunks and this is what determines the context window. Everything we said so far is the immediate application of this paper and it's very nice. But the implications are way more interesting. The question is, as humans, do we have a native input text for our brain? We just see visuals and interpret them into text. It's like the difference between Tesla FSD and Waymo. Tesla relies only on vision to understand, for example, depth, but Waymo uses LiDAR and it ends up being a lot more limited. This is the part that Andre Karpathy posted about, how this approach can officially retire language models in favor of fully vision-based models that contain text as a subset. Just one model that is 100% vision native and reading text is just one part of seeing and understanding the world. Let's see some of the incredible benefits of this approach in Andre's words. AI has been moving towards multimodality for a long time, and the reason major labs are pushing towards better video and image generators is exactly that. They can use these tools as a virtual environment for training models beyond LLMs. But the interesting part is that along the way, they are making incredibly profitable businesses. These visual AI products are insanely expensive bridges for the labs. They spend billions of dollars on these to someday build AGI, but they can be life-changing for regular people right now. Using AI to create amazing visuals is one thing, but turning that skill into a real business with a professional website is a whole different challenge. Ready that AI built a website for a fictional agency called Visionary Reels. I gave it a single prompt and it even includes an AI assistant out of the box. How can I assist you today? Yeah, can you book an appointment for me? Of course. What type of service would you like to book with Visionary Reels? What type of services do you have? We offer AI-enhanced video editing, YouTube automation and content strategy, and AI-powered motion graphics. Okay. Yeah, I want to talk about AI YouTube automation. For AI YouTube automation, do you have a preferred date or time for the appointment? Tomorrow would be great. For tomorrow, I have openings from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Which time works better for you? 3 p.m. Perfect. Can I get your name and phone number to confirm the booking for AI YouTube automation at 3 p.m. tomorrow? My name is Jay and my phone number is... Thank you, Jay. Just to confirm, your phone number is 1th, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Great, Jay. I've booked you for AI YouTube automation on October 21st at 3 p.m. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, thank you. 
Thanks for calling Visionary Reels. If you have any other needs, feel free to contact us anytime. Have a great day. Just like that, it syncs with my calendar and lets the client book a time. The website looks professional. It contains a portfolio for my AI work and even service packages with realistic pricing. The built-in agent can also chat with the clients and answer questions. I ask a common pre-sale question. What is the typical turnaround time for a project? The agent answered, we can deliver most projects three to five times faster than traditional methods. Typical turnaround is three to seven days for standard projects. You can add any other frequently asked questions in agent settings and Ready takes care of the rest. If you want to build an amazing website that actually works for you, you have to check out Ready. I've put a link for you all in description. No matter what you do, go build your own website. It is incredibly powerful. Huge thanks to Ready for sponsoring this part of the video. Now go back to Andre Karpathy. So Andre Karpathy says, Maybe it makes more sense that all inputs to LLMs should ever be images. Even if you happen to have pure text input, maybe you'd prefer to render it and then fit that. More information compression, shorter context windows, more efficiency. Significantly more general information stream. Because text is never really text. Bold text, colored text, the surrounding context of the text like if it's a caption for an image or a footnote. These all add meaning. Input can now be processed with bi-directional attention easily and as default, not auto-regressive attention. A lot more powerful. This is a crucial point. Outside diffusion models, every other LLM utilizes auto-regressive attention. And it's super compute intensive. What does that actually mean? In an auto-regressive model like GPTs, the model predicts one token, word or subword at a time. And each new prediction depends on everything that came before it. So if you want to understand the meaning of the last word in a sentence, you have to consider all the previous words because they shape its context and interpretation. But here is the recursive part. To truly understand any word, you need to understand how all the earlier words affect it. Each word's meaning depends on the meanings built from all the ones before. It's like peeling an onion. To interpret the next layer, you have to peel back and reconstruct everything before it. But in models like BERT, Bidirectional attention means that every token in a sequence can attend to all other tokens both past and future at once, like a patch in an image, and there is no regression. Now this is way above my pay grade and I'm not entirely sure why this approach works better with bidirectional attention, but if Andre says so, I'll take his word for it. And finally, it helps to delete the tokenizer at the input. This has been a pain in the ass for researchers. Tokenizers are ugly separate, not end-to-end -end stage. Quotation marks imports all the ugliness of Unicode, byte encodings, it inherits a lot of historical baggage, security jailbreak risks, for example, continuation bytes. Basically, tokens are not just pure words. There are a lot of historical baggages that change it. Like, it makes two characters that look identical to the eye look as two completely different tokens internally in the network. And also, a smiling emoji looks like a weird token, not an actual smiling face. The tokenizer must go. So this is a very interesting route and Honestly, I think everyone is going to eventually switch to this approach. Not exactly an OCR connected to a vision language model, but an end-to-end -end vision model that is trained on images of documents to learn reading in the significantly richer environment of vision, not receiving soulless digital tokens. But when I say this week was absolutely crazy, I'm not kidding. All of this beauty so far wasn't even the biggest news. Major AI labs have been reportedly experimenting with a form of continual learning that's considered extremely dangerous. Even so, Elon apparently plans to move forward with implementing it in Grok 5 and releasing it to the public. Continual learning is the biggest roadblock to AGI right now. We have super smart models, arguably too smart, but the only reason they are not taking over every digital job right now is that they can't learn on the job, and that's a huge flaw. How do major labs plan to fix this? Apparently, reinforcement learning. So imagine just like the model is learning to use tools, write better code, or even gain the ability to think in the lab using RL, you build an automated system for the users, and the model constantly updates itself based on user feedback. Thinking models are basically just regular models that have learned to think through RL. 
So we can teach models something new. And the idea is maybe we can bring that to the public side. And it has a lot of challenges. But apparently it can be done. Let's hear from Jerry Torek, VP of Research at OpenAI. And I'll add a couple of more points at the end. Is there a concept of, um, uh, I guess, online RL that, that happens where as the agent does something and learns from the real world, uh, the RL happens in, in real time? So in general, like, all, all of RL is happening. Like most of RL that, that you hear talk to uh, language models is online, but it's done online in a way that is still a training run. It's still being trained kind of separately from the user. There have been a few models in the world and I've I've learned recently that I think I think Cursor uh, is trying to train some models online with their with their users in mm -hmm. the loop. And it is theoretically possible to train models again in ChatGPT or every other product just, just, just responding to the users and reinforce through whatever whatever rewards you get in there. But this is not what I am aware at least like not, not, not what OpenAI is doing at the moment. And it is it's can be great, but it can be also dangerous because you are not really very much controlling what you are reinforcing in that loop and what's what could what could happen. So I, at least until until we have a really good safeguards, I don't think I don't think we should try to do that in anything like as as, as, as complex and large scale as ChatGPT. So that's one. We have no idea what people might teach the model, and that's a huge red flag. Plus, I'm not sure if he is talking about continual learning per AI instance or session or continual learning for the model overall. But my guess is the latter. For example, my guess is in Cursor's case, the model is going to continually learn about programming, but not about your code base. I don't think reinforcement learning is efficient enough, nor do we currently have the computational resources to perform it effectively at an individual level. Which brings us to Elon Musk saying, Grok5 has a 10% chance of reaching AGI. I've said it before, there is a 0% chance Elon can make an accurate prediction in his life. But in this case, he said something that makes me wonder a bit. Someone actually asked on X, will it have continuous learning? And Elon responded, dynamic reinforcement learning is important. Grok5, like smart humans, will learn almost immediately. So he's claiming an efficient way of learning, like a truly intelligent human. And if that were true, it would change everything. But of course, it's not we shouldn't downplay a general continuous learning loop as well. Even an aggregate reinforcement learning of all the users in inference time is a huge unlock and something we haven't seen so far. I'm not sure what are the reward signals and how they can ensure security. But if they somehow pull it off, the amount of user-generated feedback in any given industry can spin the flywheel so fast that we will get incredibly competent models compared to the models imprisoned by the labs. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.